A warm welcome back. It's still Friday the 10th of September. Now there's some interesting data from the COVID symptom study app with Tim Spector and King's College London. This is the largest study of its type in the world and hopefully, well I know many of you like me are filling it in every day. Now I want to bring some information from there so let's go and have a look at that now. Now here we have they always do a good logo, so that, that's, the, that's the logo for this one. Now, this is data from the 21st of August to the 4th of September. COVID cases no longer climbing as feared. So, Tim Spector last week was thinking that with schools going back and some pop festivals that we've had, cases would start to rapidly escalate. And I must say, I agreed with him, but they haven't. It just shows you, I mean... You know, these are the best people. Tim Spector is one of the leading epidemiologists in the country, and he couldn't even predict this pandemic from from, from one week to the next. And I must say, I, I agreed with Tim Spector. So um, it, it's it is just very very hard to predict, with the exception of Scotland, where cases in Scotland are going up quite dramatically, and no one's that clear why. So it really seems bizarre. If Scotland was was a outside country, it would be on the red list and yet people are travelling back and forward. So these the, the, these amber traffic light systems are somewhat arbitrary given that Scotland is, is free movement and really it should be on the red list because the cases are so high in it. So slightly encouraging. Probably the part of the reason that cases are so high in Scotland is that schools have gone back, but there again schools are back in the, in the, in the rest of the country now as well. So it really is very hard to uh, to explain what's going on, but this is, this is the case. So... No longer climbing as feared is the heading. Current cases about 51,000, 52,000 symptomatic cases per day. And of course, the COVID symptom tracker app is reporting symptomatic cases, which means it's almost the same. Well, it is essentially live data. It's updated on the day. So this is this is as live data as we get. Now, this data here that we're looking at now from the 21st of August to the 4th of September, it's based on about a million weekly reports and specifically it's based on 31,075 PCR and lateral flow tests. So th th these are really good chunky <laughs> data sets here. Down 9.2% from the 57,158 uh, on average new daily cases the week before. So it is it is encouraging and Tim Spector's unable to give a reason for it, so um, it's unlikely I could think of one if he can't think of one. So it's interesting. Is it community immunity starting to develop to some extent? Well, let, let's hope that is indeed the case. Now, in the fully vaccinated population, now this is going to be a concern, uh, 17,647 symptomatic cases in the fully vaccinated. Now, I haven't got data on it now, but... Protection against hospitalisation and severe illness, which had been lasting very well in the fully vaccinated, is now starting to wane. It is starting to wane a bit, a bit. It's not waning as much as the, uh, as the protection against infection is waning, but it's starting to wane a bit. It is concerning, and uh, that may mean that booster doses become more probable. It really is... An ongoing drama this pandemic it just keeps surprising you on a week-to-week -week basis so um, last week's average was 17,342 so th th these are symptomatic cases remember in the fully vaccinated so that is a pretty high number nearly getting on for 18,000 new cases are highest amongst the among the uh, 0 to 18s and 18 to 35 year olds we'll see a graphic of that in a minute on average, one in 90 people in the UK has got symptomatic COVID. This is still very high prevalence. UK R values round about one. Wales and Scotland are higher. And as we say, we don't really know why they're higher, but, but they are. The cultural behaviour and everything in Scotland and England and Wales seems to be very similar. And yet th these are the differences that the data is showing. Scotland and England cases remain highest in uh, North. Uh, Scotland and England cases highest in the younger age groups, not to 19. Now, long COVID is a long standing concern, and the numbers are way too high. 894 people predicted to be developing long COVID lasting for more than 12 weeks per day. Now, it's being doubly vaccinated, I think slightly, about half or slightly more than halves the risk of getting long COVID. So being fully vaccinated is your best current protection against long COVID. 
but it's not an absolute protection and these numbers are still way too high unfortunately so that is uh, a lot of people still developing long COVID and we know that tragically some of these people are still going to have it longish term perhaps up to a year or more it's great the direct quotes from tim Spector. it's direct to see uh, the return to schools and summer festivals haven't yet resulted in a spike of cases as feared as we were predicting just last week worse in scotland rates are still rising scottish hospitals could soon be overwhelmed now this is a real problem what is going to happen are there going to be localised restrictions? We don't know yet. That's a shout for the politicians, of course. But hospital conditions in Scotland are starting to near capacity now. And of course, a lot of people that should be getting all the routine treatment they deserve are not getting it. So Scotland is the main worrying part of the United Kingdom at the moment. It makes it clear we can't be complacent about COVID-19 as winter approaches because we are still protected by a really good summer that we've had in the UK. As winter approaches, it is a concern. Still producing too many cases of long COVID, of course, and hospitalisations because of the lack of vaccination or the lack of double vaccination as well. And now for 521 days, Zoe, has been, uh, Zoe and Tim Spector have been asking the government to change their a description of the symptoms so it's not just fever it's not just cough although it can be but these other symptoms are more common so uk rates are highest in europe if the government continues with no restrictions then at least it should give us the right advice and this is what tim Spector's has just published on his video today do check out the link excellent video um, and, and these are well worth memorizing really runny nose 77 percent of people who are doubly vaccinated present with a runny nose this actually this data is true for people that are doubly vaccinated and children so 77 percent presenting with a runny nose 74 percent with headache 67 percent with sneezing 52 percent with sore throat and 52 percent with loss of smell now people can still get the cough they can still get the fever it's just less common so these are the symptoms to give a high index of suspicion means that people should stay at home stopping the spread. That could be why cases are so much higher. Other countries have taken on the advice of the COVID, COVID symptom tracker app, whereas the UK government as yet has not. And this is really hard to explain. I don't know why they haven't. Really don't know. Now let's look at some graphics. Just get rid of me for a minute. So here we see some graphics. Now this is the... Um, there's a Zoe COVID study, UK incidence figures results over time, total number of new cases and new cases in the fully vaccinated. So what we see here, this is the total number of new cases. This is the cases in the fully vaccinated. And we see that that gap is narrowing. So more cases are occurring in the fully vaccinated, unfortunately, is the story of that graph. And the trend does seem to be up the way. In fact, the trend is definitely up the way there now it'll be interesting when we start getting data on those that are fully vaccinated and been re-exposed to the natural infection that data is being collected now so people that have been vaccinated or anyone really that tests positive is now going for antibody studies uh, both at the time they're uh, in fact initially present with symptoms and i think it's a month later so we should be, have, we'll have a whole massive cohort of people in the UK who have been doubly vaccinated and have had the natural infection. And we will know that for a fact. And then what we will see, I predict, is that these people will be much more protected against reinfection, much more protected against severe disease. But we don't know that yet. But that's what we are. That's what I'm predicting, certainly, really quite, uh, quite with a, a quite a high degree of certainty from what I understand about the immune systems in the body. This next one, incidents uh, by age group, so a bit hard to see here, but we see that uh, the younger age groups, 0 to 18 and 18 to 35 are the highest. This down here is the, uh, the 70 to 75 and over age group. This is the 55 to 75. So we see it's younger people that are now more likely to be infected. Prevalence by region. Um, now, flattish in every, but this is the line here for scotland look at that wow i mean why is scotland going up so steeply scotland is going up other areas are flattish which is good to see predicted long covid now this is the um 
This is the predicted long COVID in the second wave before we had vaccination. This is the predicted long COVID in the current third wave where we have vaccination and we can see that many less people are getting long COVID now because they're doubly vaccinated. But we can see that the protection there is perhaps less than 50% roughly. So it's still uh, not a good situation. So yes, we are protected. Yes, we're getting le less long COVID than we did in the in the second wave without such good vaccine protection, but it's still much higher than we would like to see. And again, will we see a waning in the protection from long COVID in people that are doubly vaccinated and are not exposed to the infection? Or will we see that there's less long COVID in people that are doubly vaccinated then exposed to the infection to get a booster? We're going to know that in the next few months. We don't know yet. I, I suspect that will also be the case as natural immunity starts to develop. But we can't speculate too much on that because we simply don't know yet. Uh, so this is this is comparison of the prevalence of Zoe figures and uh, confirmed cases by the Office of National Statistics. So this basically is showing that it's working now. Of course, the, the Zoe data is always higher because this is picking up symptomatic individuals and some of these are asymptomatic. But we can see pretty good comparative lines here between the Zoe data there and this is the average confirmed cases by the Office for National Statistics. So we can see pretty good consistency there in these different data sets. So that's all I wanted to say really today. I'm just going to show you one more thing though. Um, and th th this is pretty, it's, it's, it's not a good situation. Um, it's North Korea. Um, situation in North Korea. Just reading uh, in the popular press today about North Korea. Um, the North Korean authorities seem to be seeing the pandemic as a real existential threat and completely close the borders. Trade from China is virtually non-existent and this means that there's a lot of food shortage in, in North Korea. It's just a terrible situation. How many COVID cases there are? Well, you make up a number, I make up a number. That They're both equally valid. We simply don't know. But the North Korean authorities are actually shooting people or indeed animals that go across the border. This is being rigorously enforced. North Korea is more isolated than ever. So just spare a thought for the people under one of the world's most oppressive regimes. So there we go. We really are waiting for this antibody data to come through. I'm hoping that's going to start coming through soon. Because if the antibody data is showing that people that have been doubly vaccinated and while they still enjoy a good level of protection from double vaccination and being exposed to the natural form of the virus, if that's greatly boosting the immunity that people enjoy, then that may well mean uh, that the government changed their advice, allowing people to become naturally infected after vaccination. We're not there yet, but that could be the way that longer term herd immunity or community immunity is achieved. In the shorter term, the waning of the protection from the vaccines means, in my view, it's more likely that the United States and the UK will be going for a booster dose of vaccine this autumn stroke early winter. And things could get more severe as the weather gets worse in the northern hemisphere. So we've got this final hopefully final flurry of the pandemic over the closing months of 2021. We will keep watching with interest and uh, thank you for watching this talk.